Hello, 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 everybody. Happy frigid, ridiculous Saturday. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a nice, toasty, warm space to be working out in today um, and not your garage. However, I will say, thanks to a little tiny space here that's been running for a very long time, it is somewhat comfortable. So thanks guys so much for joining me. Uh, I don't want to take too much time because I do want to do a little bit of explanation. We are launching sort of a new class format today that I'll start throwing in as we uh, keep going with these videos. So um, let's go over equipment first and then from there I'll give you a, a quick explanation of sort of just what the difference is with this new class today and then we'll get started. So what you're going to need in total for both parts of class today is your full weight selection. Um, and really, you know, you're not going to need many weights, actually, so it's kind of a shame to be like, bring your whole boat of weights over, but I do want you to have some options, because while we're not going to use a lot of weights, it is kind of these, kind of, kind of going to be all over the place. So, full weight selection, you're going to need a circular resistance band, and in this case, for how we're using it, um, you probably will be fine, like if you're someone who has the fabric bands and these rubbery kind of bands, most of what we're doing is going to be sort of the rubbery bands, um, but either way, have them both side by side if that's something that you have, um, but sometimes I tell you, you know, the fabric bands are really more what we're looking for today, leaning towards the rubber band side. So you do need a circular one, um, not really bearing resistance. We'll be doing similar exercises with it, so if you have a whole bunch of these, just grab the one that you would consider challenging, and that'll be good. Also, you're going to need a Swiss ball or a stability ball, whatever you like to call it. One of these guys here. This is going to be another piece of equipment we're going to use today. Now, that being said though, you don't need that. I'm going to give you an alternative. Also for the bands too, I'm going to give you an alternative because I still have kind of a wound situation here, so I'm not going to be able to put a band up around here today. So I'm going to show some alternatives that I'll be using as well. So if you have the resistance band, you have the ball, beautiful, bring them to the party. But if you don't, no worries. I'll show you what else you can do. And then lastly, as Miss Rue is demonstrating so beautifully here, you'll need your yoga mat, your floor support, whatever it is that keeps you comfy in the floor. And also too, kind of double duty, yoga mats also help keep the balls, if you're using one of these big stability balls, a little more stable and a little less rolling around. <laughs> All right guys, so what we're doing today is my new class format that I'm calling short circuits because I love plays on words, and, but it is really exactly that. So we're gonna do circuit exercise. But usually in circuits, we do one circuit that takes the entire class. So today we're gonna do short circuits. We're gonna do two, still gonna be about the same class time, but two different circuits. So why is that different and how is that different? Um, how it's different, well, let me tell you how it's the same. So how it's the same, we're gonna work in one minute rounds, we're gonna do 20 seconds off, and uh, we're gonna take a break, short break between each circuit. So that's how it's the same. So how's it different? Um, really, what makes it different is, so let's say today, we're still, we're doing four circuits, so we're gonna do a total of eight exercises. So if we did one circuit, it would also be eight exercises. How that's different though, by breaking it up, is that, so today, we're gonna to do one circuit of booty, one circuit of arms and core. So if we were to mishmash all those together, like I normally do in circuit, let's say, for instance, we're gonna do a single leg deadlift. We would do single leg deadlift once, and then it would be about 15 minutes till we get back to that single leg deadlift again, another 15 minutes and we get back to it again, another 15 minutes we get back to it again. Not problematic, but we are releasing all of that tension, um, unless we were doing like an all booty circuit, but we'd be releasing that tension, that work of the deadlift for 15 minutes before we get back around to it. When really it's better to stay in a muscle group that you're trying to build, you know, for at least, you know, not to have that big of a gap. Two to three minutes, longer than that too, but to really work on building that muscle, you want to stay in it for a, you know, a condensed period of time. So by breaking these up into short circuits, now our single leg deadlift, we're going to get to like every four minutes instead of every 15 minutes. So it's letting us kind of work more on muscle building, but with a circuit style. So that's the difference. 
So we're not spending basically so long out of a muscle group or so long away out of an exercise that that muscle's kind of already relaxed, released, and when we get back to it, it's almost like starting it over again. The muscles with a short circuit, the muscle stays warm, the muscle stays active, and we keep coming back to it. So that's the difference when we break it up. I can easily take these eight exercises, make it an awesome one circuit, call it an abs, booty, core circuit, and, or yeah, abs, arms, and booty circuit. You know, we could easily do it that way. It would be a great workout. This way, we're just getting a little more muscle intense by breaking the circuit down into two and staying in that muscle group longer. Make sense? All right, so that being said, we've got two circuits, four exercises, one minute on, 20 seconds off, short break at the end of each circuit. That's how we're gonna work. What I'm gonna do first, show you the exercises of circuit one so we don't waste any time in our circuit and we just get to work. And then once we finish circuit one completely, we'll take a break, I'll set you up for circuit two and then we'll get started. So everything else from here is just the basic things I always ask. Uh, modify if you need it. If I'm not telling you how to modify, drop me a line. I will be happy to help you. Um, I'll stop at the each um, at each end of our four cycles just to pop my head in real quick and see if you have any questions. And then lastly, always please just share, subscribe, like, friend, follow, all of those things, all of those clicking things that you can do that just helps us get more support, gets us in front of more eyes, and hopefully gets some more people joining us here at Strong Style Fit. And lastly, if you would like to donate any funds for these classes, it is greatly appreciated. It is the only payment I receive for these classes. So it does sincerely, truly help me. So thank you so much for those of you who do give. It really means a lot and I appreciate you. And most of all, I appreciate you being here with me. All right guys, so what we're gonna do in our first circuit is front, side, back leg raises. So we're gonna work single-sided. So four circuit, four cycles through the circuit. So we've worked like all left, then all right, then all left, then all right, okay? Everything's single-sided. So front, side, back leg raises. We're gonna put this band around our ankles. We're gonna stand nice and tall and we're gonna flex that foot. Not hard, don't give yourself a cramp. Just turn your foot up a little bit and we're gonna come to the front, the side, and squeeze to the back. So that's exercise one. Exercise two, single leg deadlift. I'll let you choose the variation. I'm going to work in a kickstand. We've got one foot kicked back, just a little bit of weight and we sit back into our deadlift and stand. That's exercise two, or you could do the deadlift this way. Whichever way you want to work, I'll let you choose. Choose your own adventure. Number three, we're gonna do mule kick fire hydrant. We're gonna come down to the floor. Band around the thighs, or if you're with me today and you don't wanna band around your thighs, we're gonna put a weight in the crook of our knee. And we're going to mule kick, fire hydrant. Mule kick, fire hydrant on hands and knees. Number four, we're going to do clamshells. Band, again around the thighs. For clamshell, they can be a little closer down to your knees, never on your knees. So I am going to try the band down here for me today. With mule kick, fire hydrant, the bands always roll up. They always end up up here, and I can't have any pressure right here right now. So that's where we're going. I'm going to get a quick sip of water. I've done a lot of talking already. I'm going to check the video and then we will get started. I'm going to have both my band options here available for me. And then for my fire hydrant mule kick, I don't know what I need. Holding weights in the crooks of your leg can be tricky, so I'm going to set out a couple of options. It's very functional. It can just be a little tricky. This is one place where if you have um, just show you real quick. If you're going to be holding between your knee, these skinny dumbbells, these skinny handles are harder actually to get a grip on with your, in the crook of your knee. If you happen to have laying around your house, some of those more thicker like neoprene rubber weights, they're usually colorful, um, usually reserved for the lighter ends of the weights. Those are actually good because usually those handles are thicker and have more of a grippier material. Those actually work really well in the crooks of your knee. So just a pro tip. All right, quick break. Be right back. We're going to get going. All right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to get us delayed any further. So 
we are going to put band around our ankles and we've got our front, side, and back. Remember, we are working single-sided. So pick left or right, whichever place you want to start and stick to it for this whole round. All right, I'm gonna shimmy forward with my bands and hit start on our timer. All right, so we're starting now. So we're going, I don't wanna kick this through, so I'll start with my right, front, side, and back. So some things here, front, side, back. We're working this all by squeezing. So I'm not lifting through my hip and trying to kick up like a rock head. I'm squeezing through my quad, squeezing through the hip, squeezing through my booty. Feeling work over here? Normal. The plant leg's doing a lot of work too. It's holding all your body weight. It's stabilizing you. Your left is doing all sorts of work. So you're working both legs here, really. It's not about how high you can kick. It's about how much squeeze you can get in those muscles. You've got 10 seconds. Perfect. 20 seconds of rest. I'm going to kick the band off. Ah, all right. It feels good. This is my first attempt at leg exercise uh, since I've been on restriction, but I wanted to keep it safe, so I'm not doing uh, any squatting in our legs, you'll notice today. All right, so we're working right leg, so I'm going to single leg deadlift with my right. I've got my little kickstand coming down. Stand. So we've got just a teeny bit of weight in that back foot. And we sit back into our deep chair, but we're not squatting. So we're just sticking our hips back and squeeze to stand. I'm actually going to switch my weight there so I don't accidentally bump that spot on my leg. So all of our weights in the back of that foot are really sitting back, so we're not squatting down. We're driving our hips back. Stand. I like to kind of keep my hand on my hip to make sure I'm not sitting out to the side. Some of us have a bad habit of that. Some of us being me. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna come down. Hi, sweet girl. We're going to come down for a mule kick fire hydrant. So I'm not using a band for this exercise, but if you want to, just put it around your thighs, nice and high, sort of mid thigh. Otherwise, maybe here. Get a weight between my knee, hands and knees. Hello, little girl. We mule kick up, fire hydrant open. Mule kick up, fire hydrant open. So using the weight is a great alternative to the band if you don't have one or you find them annoying. Just a little different type of work since it's weight versus resistance. You want to make sure that you're keeping both hip points facing the floor. So when you open up for your fire hydrant, you don't want to open your hips open. You want to keep them down, just open that leg. You can also do this with no weight and no band. Make this a little more of a starter exercise. No weight, no band. Body weight works just fine. All right, so we've got clamshells. So I'm going to take that band. And this one we want a little lower. We never want bands on our knees. But down lower on our thighs. We stack heels. Heels in line with hips. Squeeze and open. Squeeze through that booty to open. It's easy to kind of pull through your knee. I want you to think squeezing through that cheek to open that leg. Now if you're propped up on an elbow like I am, make sure that you're nice and tall through that shoulder, not collapsing down. If this is uncomfortable, you can absolutely, sorry toots, <laughs> Lay down, squeeze.
Honestly, it just feels so good to be moving my legs. <laughs> they felt so stiff. if we have any questions or comments. I'm going to see if little girl like to go inside. Just go inside. It's cold out here. Say bye, everybody. All right, all right. Got a little bit more time. I think actually this breaks a little bit longer than we need. So I'm going to pop in while there's a little bit of time left, shorten our breaks by just a little bit. All right, let's get to work, guys. Left side, or if you were working left already, right side. Who's got front, side, and back. So here, you can reduce some of the pressure, obviously by choosing a less resistant band, or you don't have to keep your foot up. So you see, I'm never touching down as I transition, but you can, if you need to, tap in the middle. Come back, tap in the middle. Come back, tap in the middle. So you've got options. And just make sure that when you're coming out to the side that you're not leaning away, especially to the back, that you're not tick-tocking forward. You want to keep an upright body just moving through this leg. Woo! That standing cheek is screaming. <laughs> Woo! All right, so like I said, when we first did those leg raises, your plant leg was doing a lot of work too. So just then, while I was working my left leg, that right cheek that I had worked previously was screaming at me. So funny. All right, I just like you to know what's normal <laughs> because a lot of people get concerned when their plant leg is the one that's feeling a lot of the work. So we're going to weight to the back of that foot, sit our hips back, and stand. It's kind of a fine line. Some of us err towards a squat when we deadlift. We bend our knee too much. Very common. Happens all the time. I, when you watch me on video, I'm sure I probably do it a rep or two or more. Because our body just so naturally squats. If you do a lot of fitness, our body's just naturally like, oh, I know where we're going. We're squatting, you know? So you have to kind of tell it, no. Hips are sitting back. We're not squatting. All right. We have got our short break. We're coming down to the floor. Um, mule kicks. And fire hydrants. We tuck that weight in and we get ourselves set up. Nice tall tabletop, fingers wide, push that floor away. We kick up, open up, kick, open up. So remember, we're keeping both hip points to the ground. We're not opening up like this. Hips stay open, hips stay down, leg open. guys. Again, really squeeze through that tush. Don't think about momentum to swing your leg up. Squeeze that tush up. Whew. 
Almost there, 10 seconds. Perfect, all right. Now I will say if you're someone who's prone to um, hamstring cramps, just be careful Hold if you try the weight between the crook of your knee, because that does kind of make you really flex your hamstring, so just be careful there. All right, so we're set up for our clamshells, got our hips in line with our feet, and we open. I actually prefer to be down here. Squeeze through that cheek. So again, a lot of the work that we're doing today, it's really thinking about that booty cheek because other parts of your body can help and make the exercise easier. So we really want to isolate that muscle. So now we're gonna go back to the other side. So whatever side you were just working, let's flip it to the other one. Now be prepared, because you've now worked both legs. So now, whichever way you're front side back in, that standing leg is going to be talking to you. All right, so I'm on the right side this time. So remember, nice upright body. We don't lean against the direction so we don't kick out lean back lean this way lean forward we stay tall and lift lift, lift. good if you need something for balance to hold on to perfectly fine you guys know me i'm just a big fan of balance work too so i try to do everything i can without holding on Balance is definitely something you naturally lose, and also a use it or lose that kind of thing. So you gotta keep working at it, keep challenging yourself. It's not gonna get better on its own, unfortunately. All right, I'm gonna finish. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we're back to that single leg deadlift. We didn't talk much weight selection on single leg deadlift, so just a heads up, usually that's gonna be a heavy weight. We have a lot of power in these glutes, so usually for most of us, heavy weight for a single leg deadlift. All right, with our kickstand, stand nice and tall, a little bit of bend in that knee, set it back, stand tall. And again, I was alluding to in the previous round, that a lot of us tend to sort of kick out to the side. So I like to put my hand on my hip. And I'm not really doing anything. I'm not pushing my hip. I'm not doing anything. But just mentally reminding myself to keep that hip in line. Kick fire hydrants. Now my 
my poor legs and knees have just got so stiff from inactivity. You know, the weather has been so bad. There's not anywhere to walk. You know, it's been too gross to go out and walk, really. And you don't really want to go inside for safety purposes still. So it's like, ugh, what do you do? So today, even though I wasn't fully ready to get back into the leg game, I was like, we got to do something. <laughs> It's getting a little harder to squeeze through that cheek. Woo. So I think now you're kind of seeing what I was saying in the intro about still circuit, but we're not gone away from those muscles for as long. So they're still staying super engaged and getting fatigued. Perfect. All right. Third round complete. We got one more round and our booty circuit. And then we'll be moving on to our arms and core. <sighs> Feels good. That's one of those things too, you know, it's like, you wanna sit on your couch because you're worried that exercise is gonna make you hurt and make you stiff and make your muscles hurt. Alternatively, what you don't realize is if you sit on the couch, that's what's gonna make your muscles hurt and your joints hurt, you know? it's. Motion is the lotion, as we say at Flow. Does exercise cause soreness, stiffness, injuries? Sometimes 100%, of course it does. I don't wanna be sore, stiff, or injured from doing things that make my body overall more healthy than sore, stiff, injured from things that are doing nothing positive for my body, right? All right. All right. Other side, last round. That's like, do I want to be sore or stiff because I've lost a bunch of inches? got my heart healthy, or do I want to be sore and stiff because I sat on my couch and caught up on Netflix, right? And I'm not saying that it's not good to occasionally sit on your couch and catch up on Netflix. Of course, that's fine. But I've definitely heard that as an excuse for why should I work out? You know, Tracy, you're always talking about, oh, this is tight or this is sore. Yes. I've also lost almost 130 pounds and, you know, got my health back and can fit into chairs in public places and things like that, you know, so it's just, pick your risk reward, right? All right, so the leg deadlift, kickstand it back, a little bit of bend in those knees, hip in line, 
Come down like that one. That's way too squatty. Hips back. There we go. So while we're not squatting, while we're just sitting our hips back, we do want to make sure we keep a little bit of bend of that knee. One, we never want to lock out our knee, period. But two, that little bit of bend is what engages those muscles back through here so they work. So just the slightest little bend. Beautiful. All right. Set that weight down. Let's get set up for our mule kicks, fire hydrants, and then clamshells after that. Now guys, just a quick check in on your upper body. Make sure that you are pushing that floor away. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you are not falling down into your shoulders, that you are pushing the floor away, keeping shoulders and upper body active. Now, I'm a bad culprit about this, and I was just doing it. You want to keep your gaze slightly out ahead of you, so your neck's nice and long. I'm bad about it too. I don't look down between my legs, but I generally look between my hands. It's a lot better to be looking slightly out keeping that spine in alignment. Whew. All right, clam shells, and then we'll be done with our first short circuit. attention here, not here. Boom! All right, that is the end of short circuit one. So if you happen to be somebody looking for a 30 minute or so workout, you cut it off right here and you have a great 30 minute booty workout. So that's another great thing about these short circuits is that I do two, but if you only want a 30 minute workout, you can also do that. All right, so I don't have a timer on our break, so I want to make sure I don't dawdle. So I'm going to do a quick drink, I'm going to check the video, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to coach you through the circuit two exercises, and then I'll check the video one more time just in case you have any questions about the circuit two exercises. So go ahead and take your break, grab some water, um, grab your stability ball if you have it. You are going to need some weights, and I would say here, you're looking at your lights. Well, gosh, this is probably your light, your medium, and your heavy. Uh, but I would say light and medium for sure. So just go ahead and keep all your weights close by. Grab your stability ball. And if you are not going to use stability ball, if you don't have it, no worries. Your alternatives will be in the floor. So you don't have to grab something different. You're just going to work on the floor. All right, so quick break. I'll come back, coach you through the next four exercises. All right, 
I'm walking and my, <laughs> my butt feels tired, it's like jiggly. <laughs> All right guys, so we're gonna do a renegade row. I'll give you a couple modifications. I've actually recently worked in a modification that would be your most simple modification. We're gonna do renegade row, we're gonna do both pullbacks, and I'm gonna be working in modification there. So I'll show you the full and the modified. And then we're gonna use the ball for an alternating chest fly and a ball sit overhead press. So I'm gonna walk you through them, then we'll get started. So renegade row, I'm gonna show you with no weight just so I can really slow down and show you. So the fullest version that I will not be working in today, and I'm trying to keep this leg gentle, would be to come into full plank, and you've got a weight, you're rowing, elbow right past those ribs. So that's one. Or we go to modified plank, so we step into plank, drop our knees, renegade row. Here, that's where I'll be working today. Or modify further, Come to tabletop, which is where I worked earlier this week. Renegade row, tabletop, here. If you're short limbed like me, when you're here, you're probably gonna need a weight or a yoga block or something to elevate your hands so your upper body's high enough that you're not bonking the weight into the floor. So those are your options. If getting the floor period is not an option for you, then you can stand and row. You can stand a little bent over and row. That's exercise one. Boat pullbacks. We're going to take a light weight, very light weight. Pulling boat, full version, which I will not be just because it puts a little stress here once I get tired. So we're going to hold boat. So this would be boat. And we're pulling back with our weights. And actually, that's not too bad. So I'll probably do this and the modification. So we're here squeezing between those shoulder blades, or we're here. So we sit tall pull the string up out of our chest, and then lay back until we feel that core kick in, and then we pull. Alternating chest fly on the ball. If you're not on the ball, you're gonna be on the floor. We're gonna use the ball as our bench. We're gonna sit on the ball, and then find our sweet spot, which I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on right now, but where our upper body is on the ball, our head is laying back, but not back like this. Kind of that natural curve back, We're alternating chest fly. How does this work our core? Because you've got to have a lot of core work to stabilize yourself on this ball. And then when you have weights dropping off to the side, a lot of core work to not just come off with it. If you don't have the ball, then you're going to lay on the floor. And if you still want to work your core and your upper body, because that's the purpose of the set, core and upper body, you hold bridge and alternate fly while holding bridge. So you're getting core work and your chest work. Lastly, alternated seated overhead press on the ball. So you guys know I'm a big fan of a seated overhead press on the floor because it challenges your core. We'll wait till you're sitting on the ball doing the same thing. My ball's a little underinflated, so it's not challenging me too much. But if your ball's inflated completely properly, you'll have a nice challenge. Alternatively, no ball, still on the floor. Floor's not an option, sit in the chair. All right, guys, enough me. Let's go ahead and get ourselves started. So, arms and core working together in this set. Four exercises, four rounds. I'm gonna reset the timer, we're gonna get going. All right, I'm gonna hit start. It'll take me a second, but if you're ready, go ahead, get in your renegade row position, and we're starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, well, my timer just took a dive, but I think I can see it. <laughs> I'm going to do like two each side so I don't have to transition so many times. You could also have two weights and just prop yourself up. So you would just be here, row, here, row, which is probably what I'll do next round. So you should definitely feel some core work 
If you're working on plank, situated on that ball. It takes a minute for you to find yourself. So I wish we had a little longer than 20 seconds to set up, but we'll be all right. All right. I also didn't have my weights, which was the bigger issue. All right, so we're here. We've got our hips up. Back on the ball, top of shoulders on the ball. Alternate, chest fly. So you feel that core challenge with that weight drops off to the side. You gotta really engage that core and not drop right off the side of the ball. Or maybe you did drop right off the side of the ball. That's all right, jump back on. Or you're in the floor holding bridge here and alternating your chest fly. You're also probably feeling that already well-worked booty. Everything's got to squeeze to hold you up on that ball. Woo! Yes, indeed. All right, so we've got our seated on the ball overhead press. Woo! I was aligned with needing all the different weights. I've got four exercises and four sets of weights. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna sit on that ball, nice and tall. Bring those weights up and press. So like I said, my ball's a little underinflated. So it really works kind of like a seat for me. But if you've got a ball that's nice and fully inflated, you'll definitely have some wiggle on that ball. That makes that core really have to work. Now I'm not saying mine doesn't have to, but when it's under inflated, you just sit down into it a little more. The cold overnight definitely zapped it. 10 seconds. up in a way that makes a little more sense to me here. Ah. So these are my rows. Pull backs. There. <laughs> They're at least in order now. All right. So we've got about 35 seconds. Take your break. If you need to sort of readjust like I did. Now's your time. Ah. 30 seconds. Whew. Catch your breath. That's going to be a little sweaty too.
Tanisha, I saw your Instagram post and I have it saved because I wanted to have time to comment and send you a thoughtful comment back that I could talk to you here. Hi friend, I'm so, so excited that you're going to be working out with me. So excited. I can, I miss you so much. I miss your classes. I miss your spirit. I'm so excited to know that you'll be here with me. So, so excited. All right, guys. Renegade Row, if you're modifying, you're here. Where I'm up on my weights. Because it just helps with that transition when you're alternating. I know for most of us, it's not the most comfortable place to be up on our weights like this. I get it. So if you can't, just do what I did in the previous round and transfer one weight from hand to hand. I don't love it either, but I feel like I can deal with it for a minute usually. Elbow scrapes past those ribs. Both pullbacks. So, I guess bring it on up or get down to the floor. <sighs> Guys, if you are <sighs> watching this an hour after the fact and you love yoga or you're interested in learning about yoga from a real perspective, and I mean that in the best way, look up Tanisha Hubbard. Just comment on this video. I believe it's Tan the Yogi. I hope I'm not getting that wrong on Instagram. She's a great instructor. She's offering virtual classes. So, so good. Check her out. Squeeze between those shoulder blades. Squeeze. Belly up and in. Almost there. Woo! Goodness gracious. When you're kicking your own butt, right? <laughs> yeah, guys, definitely give her a look. If you are a well-versed yogi or a starting out yogi, look her up. All right. Get herself set on the ball. And I just keep out shooting where I need to be. There we go. All right. So we've got shoulders on the ball. Head relaxed. Weights over our chest. We try. Push through those feet, lift those hips, squeeze that core, and you have got to, got to lock everything down to keep yourself elevated on this ball and not falling off to the side. Try to keep that head relaxed. clients that if you were to watch someone do it, you'd be like, yeah, I guess, you know, Woo! but then you do it yourself. And you're like, oh, oh crap. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're on that ball. We've got our seated overhead press. Alternating. So why are we doing alternating when we're on the ball? It just adds that extra core challenge. When you're lopsided, you have to work to keep the balance. Whereas if we push them together, it's not quite as challenging to our core. And again, this circuit is about core and upper body working together. Whew. Sweat is officially pouring out of my hair now. All right, 
We have got our break. Two rounds down, two to go. Whew. So this is just another great example of what I tell you guys about. When you work one body part versus two together. Arms, you don't really think about being a sweater. Core, you don't really think about being a sweater. Put them together, sweat rolling on the back of my hair. <laughs> All right guys, we're halfway through our break, 30 seconds. Go through it two more times. You got this, you got it. I'll be right back. <sighs> Tanisha, if you happen to still be watching, drop links to yourself in the comments so people can find you. <sighs> All right guys, Renegade Road Time starts now. So remember, we can be in full plank and row. We can be in modified plank and row. Or we can be in tabletop. We've got a lot of options to work in, wherever you want to be today. I'm going to try a few in full just to see how my legs feel about it. Guys, if any version you try, this is hard. If every version you're doing is like, woo, it is a hard exercise. It's a hard, renegade rows are one of those like top of the mountain exercises for me that I never thought I could do in any version. And the first time I was able to, I almost cried. I just never thought. It's just such a challenging exercise. So wherever you're at with it, be proud. It's tough. All right, chest up, sit back. So again, chest tall, sit back to engage that core. And then legs can be here, or legs can be down, heels on the floor. Squeeze in between those shoulder blades. If the weights are too heavy, put them down. So heels can be here. You can also alternate if you're somewhere in the middle. Extra core challenge, actually, because we're lifting that leg up. Whew. Weights are getting heavy for me. Pull. Pull. Yes. So I just like to give you all the options. I don't have the pleasure of knowing who's working out with me normally. I know my, my tried and trues, but overall, I don't know who might be watching on YouTube later. So I like to show you everything. So you know, no matter where you at, where you're at, you have a place here with us. All right. So push into those feet, chest on the ball, engage through those hips. Whew. This is also my first lower body or core exercise in two weeks. And I can tell <laughs> I've lost a little bit of my stamina with it. That's good though, stuff like that. It bounces back fast. It's frustrating at first, I know. I've dealt with it a lot of my group fitness people. When they have setbacks, they come back. And it is, that first class, those first couple classes, will kick your butt. And you feel like, oh my gosh, have I lost all of this that I've worked for? You know, it's taken me years to build, did I just lose it in two weeks? It's like, no, your body will bounce back. Those muscles have just kind of went to sleep. You gotta wake them back up. <sighs> and 
get them working again. So, I'm also talking to myself a little bit here, but generally I am, right? I'm no different than any of you guys. So here, just a little bit out of our shoulders, a little bit forward. We don't want to be even with our shoulders. Just a little bit forward. Neck nice and relaxed. Shoulders down, neck long. Almost there. Ten seconds now. Three, two, one. Woo! That's our break. And I think for self-preservation, protecting my shoulders, I'm going to go down on those overhead presses next round. Ah. Almost there, guys. We got one exercise left. One more trip through our circuit, I should say. So we are so close to being done. So I hope you're seeing kind of the difference in the short circuit and the traditional long circuits we do. It's different, right? It's so different. It's kind of cool to see this idea I had sort of playing out and working like I thought. All right, we've got 25 seconds. I'm going to check the camera one more time. And we're going to get right to it. All right, Renegade Road Time. So we've got tabletop here, elbows scrape up past those ribs, nice and tight to the body, or we can work in modified plank. to work in a full plank. Whew. Normally, if I'm going to take the full challenge of a full plank in a game row, I'll lighten my weights just a little bit. Hang tough. Four. Woo, two. One. Woo. All right, we've got two exercises left. So remember, if you're not doing chest flies on the ball, then you're doing it in bridge on the floor. Push through those feet. Engage that core. 
a little bit of bending those elbows. Weights over that chest. Whew. So much core work to keep you on that ball. You could so easily just topple right off to the side. Glutes firing, core engaged tight, chest working hard. We've got so many muscles working here. overhead press. So remember, if you don't have the ball, we sit on the floor, we sit on a chair, or a bench, if you have a bench. Of course, that works perfectly too. All right. Last set. Overhead press. You can do it. sit on this ball too. Make sure you're trying to have the best posture possible. I just sort of had to correct mine. Especially if your ball's deflated, you kind of sink into it. So I noticed I was really sitting kind of swayed into my back. So I push back, get that spine in better alignment. Much more comfortable. Whew. Comfortable except for, you know, your shoulders that are on fire. Whew. 15 seconds. behind what I had in mind with these short circuits and how it works. So as I do these going forward, they will definitely get back down to a normal time frame. I just really want to take the time now to explain it and kind of go over why it was important and why I thought we should give it a shot. So I enjoyed it. If you have any feedback for me on the short circuits, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Love to hear what you think. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're sweating like me and having a great workout, burning up even in 20 something degree weather. <laughs> so guys, as always, just the last couple things I say, please share, like, subscribe, get this message out here that we're trying to accomplish with Strong Style Fit. Fitness that's accessible and successful for everyone. That's what we are looking for. And lastly, if you wish to donate any funds for these classes, Venmo is the place where you'll find me. Strong Style Fit. Any donations that you can send are greatly appreciated. It is the only payment I receive for these classes. So guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here with me. Stay safe, stay warm, and I'll see you in a few days for our next workout. Bye guys.